this bolt the nut is really rusty but i finally got it to loose loosen up so first is uh, you actually have to try to tighten it once you tighten it then you'll be able to you know break the connection and then carefully take it out you know don't rush because as you can see this nut has kind of welded itself to that stud this assembly hasn't been off for a long time so i'm gonna have to take it slow to take it out man not gonna lie this was super crazy had to use a bunch of like stones small cutout discs to get this thing loose yeah i started just grinding it with a stone and uh finally i was able to loosen this guy up also used a combination of hammer and uh you know but uh the chisels so as you can see this thing is kind of like the the seal is broken off so we'll see if i can get it out all the way yeah and i have another well uh, i have another um battery tray as well it's being painted currently because i'm restoring it i had a used one in good condition yeah and uh, we'll replace it eventually with that new one re restored one this is what happens when uh, you don't use fluid film and grease you'll have fun here yeah i ain't gotta tackle this area that's rusted out here so let's take this guy out using my special homemade tool 10 millimeter that's ground down as you can see i can easily remove these fan clutch bolts four of them 10 millimeter there it is it's a better brand who knows maybe it's still original i don't know been here for a long time but the bearing is bad need to be needs to be replaced yeah don't play around with these don't wait until they grenade and destroy everything i'm gonna be replacing that guy gotta replace a bunch of stuff here belts and everything yeah So I had to take this line off. It's got rust build up here before it gets too bad. I gotta take it off and uh, sand it, wire wheel it, and repaint it and then install it back on. Same thing, coolant tank's gonna get replaced. It's actually original. Sometimes they go bad, they actually bust, uh, bust out on the bottom, the crack. So just uh, preventive maintenance is the key here, so yeah gonna be restoring this coolant pipe as you can see it's all rusty I'm gonna repaint it and make it good power steering pump built also notice power steering pump is missing that bottom long bolt and nut this one has this one and that one right there it's still fine but I'm gonna have to try to find a new bolt and nut in the future taking out the alternator and water pump belts look at this what i saw actually i didn't see it before only all after i took it out So this hose, as 
you can see it's bulged out it got damaged because of the corrosion buildup right here literally that corrosion just kind of damaged this hose created this bulge so this hose needs to be changed and as you can see i have a bag over the alternator so coolant is not dripping on it there's a bunch of corrosion not here but mainly this guy as you can see you know so that really sucks i'm gonna have to put this portion closer to the block is better so i'm gonna use that but man it's crazy a lot of corrosion on it yeah this one's not too bad i'll reclean this surface and this one i'm gonna finish cleaning it yeah Right, I'm currently uh, wire wheeling the rust off of this coolant pipe and then I'll paint it with high heat paint. Looking good, got rid of all the rust. Gonna put the uh, rust dissolver on it now and then sand it again and then ready for paint. All right, we've got three brand new air filter mounts. We're gonna install those. And then these three are gonna be for next time if I ever need it. So yeah, I'm gonna install these right now. A little bit of copper paste. I'm gonna go ahead, tighten that down. As soon as I tighten this, there's a nut that you have to install on the bottom of it. This is why you have to change these old school coolant tanks, expansion tanks. Look at this. It was ready to actually burst out on the bottom. So yeah, gotta check that. I also have these transmission cooling line retainers. Gonna install two right now. Might have to order two or uh, four more or five more. I have two right now. I'm gonna replace the front ones. Uh, they're still there, but they're getting, getting to the point where they will need to be replaced. So they go all the way there, right there. I'm gonna replace this turbo hose. It's getting tired cracked up and got this brand new one right here I'm gonna install that all right. see this plastic is all like brittle it's not rubber anymore it's literally plastic so i gotta change these these two front ones are super important all right so brand new retainer and i put usually use silicone inside of it, it helps prevent corrosion also helps the rubber preservation
kind of doing some inspection here. These control arms were replaced, but I don't know. Either they're really bad quality or somebody didn't know what they were doing. These bushings are like really bad right here. Popped out and uh, yeah, shocks are also leaking. Shocks need to be replaced. Uh, it's another thing. So yeah, I'm probably gonna replace this. The brake hose is also kind of tired. It's got some cracking. It needs a brake flush too. So brake fluid is pretty bad. So yeah, we gotta clean this too. So I checked for play on this side. There's no play. So the tie rods and everything is good. Wall joints are good. However, I don't know, we're gonna most likely replace this control arm because I ordered new ones, ordered the Lamforder ones. And then the ball joints, they're good. They were replaced, but they the boots are torn. I'll show you in a little bit, but I'm gonna take this wheel off and inspect the brake hose. And I gotta remove the fender liners, clean them, and uh, fluid film, everything in, in the back. Well now, it looks like this boot is torn from the tie rod, right here. So probably we'll have to change the boot or the tie rod. And then that link right there, the dampener also needs to be replaced. It's got cracking, shocks need to be changed. That's weird, I've never seen this before. The bend right here in the plate. Interesting. Yeah, lower control arm bushing still okay. Getting a little cracked up, not too big of a deal. Yeah, this hose right here is starting to have cracks, so I'm gonna change that. This is the ball joint right here. As you can see, same on the other side. It's got that cracked boot. It's so sad. Spray fluid has sucked out from the reservoir. Okay, I got all the bolts out, screws. Let's see how much dirt is gonna come out. Carefully. Oh, this is really clogged up right there. Yeah, just carefully gotta pull it. Like so. Let's check this thing. Come on, baby. I'm gonna be fluid filming all this area. Oh, she's a little stuck. But anyways, there's a bunch of garbage in there. So this is where all this dirt accumulates, right there, a bunch of it. I gotta clean all this and preserve. All right, take a look at this accumulation right here. You see that rust starting right here? It's really not good. That's why you have to preserve this area ASAP. This day it likes to rust here. So I'm gonna coat everything here with grease. I don't have our time right now to actually, you know, sand this rust down on anything or anything. So I'm just gonna coat everything with grease and clean everything up here as much as possible. Yeah, now well, mainly this debris right here on the bottom. I had this uh, original Mercedes front uh, brake hose in stock. So I'm gonna be installing this one on this side. All right, installed brand new, original genuine Mercedes brake hose. You have to be really quick with this. What I actually had to do, since I took it off, it was leaking out like crazy. I had to plug it with my finger and then use my other hand to undo this end and install this end, and install that end at the end. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, the rear ones are not leaking that much, but this one, because of the gravity, just starts dumping straight out. But yeah, looks really good. I'm gonna clean everything and I'm gonna bleed this side with my vacuum bleeder. I 
All right, so I got this tie rod off. It's actually in good shape. Still, there's no issues. This one, that one is still okay, the boot. So, there's no play. I'm just gonna change this boot. I have an extra good used boot, so I'm gonna install it. Simply just grab this little screwdriver and just start removing the clip. All right, here's a good used boot. It's gonna go on. I already greased up this tie rod. And uh, yeah, that way we'll just avoid it's cracked up on the other side but I'll double check I have one more boot that I can install yeah that way we don't have to replace the tires because it's still good so all right everything's ready clip is back on ready to put this back on to the knuckle all right I also added silicone paste to it so that way it will not crack up prematurely it will stay preserved here everywhere on the inside of the fender all this is all greased up in there too amazing protection preservation all right fender liner reinstalled so I also ended up putting a bunch of grease on rubber boots it's a silicone paste not grease have to use silicone paste for that same this one same these two Okay, so it's really important. That way they will keep, uh, they will be preserved. Got this side jacked up. Checked suspension, it's good on this side too. The only thing is, again, this control arm needs to be changed. Look at this, it's crazy, dude. This is nuts. It looks like a fresh control arm. What the heck? Wow. All right, I took this fender liner off. It's like a similar situation here. It's got some rust starting, surface rust. So I don't have time right now to sand, like I said, but we're gonna do our best to clean all this garbage and then yeah, we're gonna preserve it with grease and fluid from this entire area. There's some junk too that came out. So it's a really good maintenance item to do. All right, so we're gonna install freshly restored battery tray for this car. And I'm gonna, before doing that, I'm gonna put a bunch of grease on it. So it will never ever rust out. All right, today I'm gonna start working on the transmission um, shifter linkage and bushings. I have two bushings here. It's gonna be a pain, but I gotta do it. They're both missing disintegrated i got two exhaust mounts yeah and then i actually i don't know if this is going to work or not but i'm trying to find a solution for reinforced exhaust mounts because these ones i mean they're good but then they just start cracking and they're not that good anymore you know so it just really sucks yeah it's almost like feel like just putting zip ties in there instead of these rubber mounts because they just don't last so yeah maybe this one will work i don't know it's going to be difficult to say but probably not. Maybe I'll have to modify this one. I don't know. All right, I got the linkage out together. And as you can see, it all needs, you know, this needs to be sanded, repainted, and bushings are gone. This side, the other side, just disintegrated. 
This was a big pain. Finally got this one installed. This is what I used. I actually have a Craftsman set of these uh, rounded out socket sets. I used that. It's gonna be a receiver right here. And then I used this big washer and the bolt right here. Yeah, and finally it's on. Unfortunately, I destroyed one of the new bushings when I tried to do it the first time. Yeah, these are pain in the ass. You know, I've done videos on it. I'll, link is gonna be right here, but uh, have fun with it, you know, honestly. And they sell that tool, but that tool doesn't really work. The bushing in installation tool, that tool does not really work that well at all. So it's not worth uh, paying for that tool whatsoever. I'm gonna install a new temperature sensor just in case you know this one has originally never been changed so we're gonna install a brand new one plus we have the coolant drained out already so nothing's gonna be there so it's easy to change okay it's a 19 I already loosened it let's get this out carefully don't damage anything All right, real quick, I'm gonna install this uh, used um, steering damper on this car. It's actually, the bushings are all nice and good shape. And this thing is actually also really good. It has a lot of pressure still left. So we're gonna install this guy. Yeah, there's literally, it's still in great, great condition, so. All right, so here it is. There's the steering damper, as you can see, bushings are all gone. And yeah, right here I see. It still has a little bit of pressure in there, actually. But yeah, the bushings are just no good. Same with this one, bushings are gone. Okay, so the battery, everything is reinstalled. The only thing that you can see, the battery is totally wrong for this car. Unfortunately, when my friend was getting this battery, he was in a rush and, you know, he, they only had this one in stock. So it's kind of a little bit jerry-rigged right now at this point. You know, these keepers that I restored, I can't even install them the right way. You know, so they're going to just stay like that. So this is the negative. It's going to go here on the negative and the positive. It's going to go on the positive. Unfortunately, it's gonna he's going to have to run this battery as is right now until this battery goes bad and then he'll get the correct one but yeah it's just one of those unfortunate things you know so all right got a brand new cigar hose for the fuel return line it's gonna go right over here this one's really cracked up so probably original i'm gonna change that to this guy All right, now I finally got this brand new hose that came in, brand new one. Z, remember the old one was so bad. So we're gonna install this one right in there. And I put some silicone paste all the way around here. I'm gonna put some right there around the fitting that will never seize up. It will prevent corrosion too.
All right, guys, today is a new day. I'm gonna be continuing to work on this amazing machine. We got the battery in and everything. Today, I'm gonna be putting the cooling system back together. I have a bunch of parts, I'm about to show you all the parts that I got. And yeah, we're gonna start wrapping this car up. I have to do some suspension work as well and finish up the brakes, the brake hoses and all that. So still waiting on a few parts here and there, but yeah, it's an amazing machine. Yeah, got a bunch of parts in there. Actually bought some door seals too. Probably gonna install if we have time. And now I'm changing this hose that goes from the coolant tank to the bottom of the radiator. I have a new one. These hoses get neglected, so it's a good idea to change them. That's what we're doing. Let's take this whole thing out. Loosen the bottom already. this guy I'm pretty sure it's never been changed right here okay, and we got a brand new one right here bunch of new stuff here it's got a brand new one maybe somebody needs a part number right here install this guy so I like to put silicone paste on where these hoses attached to the plastic and all that that way it'll be easy to take them off in the future and uh it actually makes things move easy too and uh it doesn't hurt the rubber all right so here's uh the thermostat housing it's not too pitted i've seen a lot worse and uh it's all cleaned up right now and I put silicone paste right here on this. Now for this part, I'm gonna put probably just a little bit of RTV for specifically for the water pump and everything. Um, but just really small, small amount. I'm not gonna go crazy or anything. Yeah, I just want to prevent any like leakage. Cause I've had it where, you know, I would install this and it would just still seep uh, because of the pitting. So yeah, it's not a huge deal. I'll just add just a little bit and then let it cure before I add any coolant. Yeah. This mating surface is also cleaned up. And same with this one where the hose goes. Got my 80 degree new thermostat. I'm gonna be installing that with brand new seal. I'm gonna use, like I said, just a little bit of this water pump and thermostat housing gasket maker, just a little bit. Thermostat's gotta go with this arrow pointed up like this. Okay, so here it is. Just put a little bit of this RTV for the thermostat and water pump. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install this guy. It's already set up. That's how you install it. Just like that. Like so. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and install it onto the housing. All right, so for all these bolts, water pump bolts, whatever, thermostat housing bolts, I'm using copper paste. And I have all the bolts cleaned up and they will never ever season there or you'll never have problems taking them out. Got new radiator hose right here, installing that. Tightening the fan clutch bolts. Okay, fan clutch installed. I'm just still waiting on belts. That's why there are no belts, but everything else is good here. New hoses. Spent probably 30 minutes trying to peel the sticker off and I'm kind of done. <laughs> yeah, thanks manufacturers for putting your stickers on so strong. The next thing, one of what I wanna do is wanna change this power steering hose, return hose. It's not in a bad shape, but it was rubbing against the body right there, which is not good. So I 
have a new hose right here. We're gonna install that. We're gonna use, somebody used the regular power string fluid. We're gonna use ATF on it. Okay, on this side, I'm also taking off this uh, shock absorber. I have new shock absorbers on the way for the rear. Gotta get those replaced. So I turned the wheel so I can get to this bolt of the shock absorber. And then this bulging board is still okay. I'm gonna put grease, um, silicone paste on it. It's starting to crack a little bit, but still okay. So. So now two wheels are off the ground and I'm turning the wheel back and forth with the engine off, getting all this fluid out of there, nasty one, and topping it up slowly with ATF. You don't want to put a lot of fluid in here right away because it's going to leak out of this return port. system is pretty empty now even though I've been adding a little bit here and there all right as you can see the drips are clear now it's red fluid so we're good on this side I'm just gonna top it off some more but I'm not gonna top it off all the way because I'm still waiting on the filter to come in and I'm still waiting. I still have to replace this power steering hose. I don't know, maybe they're never been replaced is original but yeah you see all these bushings are gone okay now the goal right here is to clean some stuff up mainly this guy I gotta sand it down and paint this this whole thing all right now after wire wheeling I'm gonna put the rust dissolver let it soak a little I can open it first soak this thing up and then wire wheel it one more time and then that's it paint it and then put grease at the end so we'll never ever rust out new controller room long forwarder and then we're gonna have new bushings here too new nut now there's no more play it's amazing uh, ready to spray the primer and paint on it. Air filter, housing all cleaned up, mounted. This is all mounted, tightened, ready to install the filter. And restored filter cover. Uh, so we got new belts, genuine Mercedes, new belts for the water pump and alternator, about to install those. All right, caliper is out of the way. I'm taking off this um, tie rod assembly stuff here from the knuckle. Because I have to replace the bulge and boot and uh, this control arm. Whoa.
nice rainy day today so you can see a bunch of rain lovely weather uh, still working on this amazing machine just gotta make progress on this side How bad this control arm is. It's also original Mercedes Benz. So maybe that's never been changed in the lifetime of this car. Okay, now we're gonna take these bushings out, they're getting replaced. And then this washer too. Take this off. And we're gonna wire wheel this rust off and treat everything here. Safety number eight. Uh, got the knuckle off. Gonna be replacing the boot. The ball joint is still good. Okay, it's just the boot is torn. I got new boot right here. All right, and I'll be changing the shocks later. Okay, about to add fresh grease to this ball joint. Looks pretty good inside. I cleaned it up a little bit. So I have to jack it up because the ball joint started spinning together. So I have to jack it up some more. Yeah, I'll have to work with it so I can tighten it all the way down. And as you can see, I put silicone paste on it too, and it will help. This is silicone paste for preservation. Yeah, finishing up some stuff, taking out this shock now. I'm waiting on a new one. Okay, so this hose right here is getting tired. I'm gonna change that too. We got a new one right here, ready to go. I already loosened this line. Nasty brake fluid is coming out, as you can see. Calipers were replaced on, as you can see, at least this side, and I think the other side too. It's just the brake hoses we're worried about. There we go. Let's get our new one installed. I'm gonna let this gravity bleed for now. I'm gonna top off the fluid too. And the floor is really clear now. While well, the brake fluid is still gravity bleeding itself, I uh, took out the old swiper link. I ordered new ones, waiting on those. This one has play already, boots are gone, in bad condition. All right, now I'm gonna be taking this cluster out. So I have to remove this kick panel, which is kind of loose right here. It's not installed all the way, Inter interestingly. But yeah, I gotta install these bulbs onto the cluster. It's gonna be really nice. It's gonna be amber color, yeah. So, but I like to push the cluster from the inside, from the backside. I don't like using the hook tilts. That's a really bad idea. 
And then this one's also missing right here, the cover and the screw. Yeah, I only took two out, two covers. All right, so now the cover is down. I can go ahead and push it from the back side. Battery's off. Yeah, so carefully push it out. Looks like whoever painted this dash cover didn't even take out the cluster. They painted the cluster. Okay. This cluster is the biggest pain in the ass. It won't come out. I try pushing on the left and right side at the same time and it's just, it's, there's a lot of pressure in there, man. She just does not want to come out. All right, finally, carefully, I got it out. That's why you never want to use any type of tools taking these clusters out or any, anything like that. Just get from the from the backside. So now it's for me to change the balls, I'm just gonna pull it out a little bit. I'm not gonna take, disconnect anything. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna be able to, you know, swap the balls as is. Well, for the right side, I had to disconnect the speedometer cable to gain access to this bulb. All right, so I had to take the cluster out because there was some issues I was having, but what I realized, these are original uh, bulb holders for the illumination for the 123. And uh, you have to use different, if you're gonna use LED bulbs, you have to use different ones. Um, you have to use these specific uh, holders right here from a newer Mercedes. Otherwise you can burn up the trace in the cluster if you're gonna do that. Cause it's gonna be like a short, Started installing new door seals right here. Long process. So installing it and then I sprayed fluid film in there. To preservation against rust. All right, I got a trans mount, power string, return hose, more fluid film. And I got these front shocks I'm gonna install. I got new bolts. For these shock absorbers too, they came with them. see how the seal is starting to crack and pretty dry rotted here everywhere so I gotta change this thing preserve this area with grease and fluid film So I'm basically almost done installing this. Okay, well, the clips are all back. I just have to put silicone um, sealant on this part so it stays on. Everything else is clipped on. And then I put silicone paste on this bottom and then also put fluid film right there. Everything looks pretty good on this door. So we're gonna keep it preserved, no rust. new belts for the alternator and water pump All right, I got the alternator water pump belts tightened up not crazy tight but I don't want to make them too tight but tight enough and then everything is tightened up there now we can uh, install this power string belt Go right there. We're gonna skip the AC belt. Uh, I don't know the situation about the AC right now. It's not really important. Uh, it's Washington State, so 
uh, it doesn't get as hot here. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Okay, now I took out the bolt. I'm gonna take this power string filter out. All right, we got two brand new flex discs that are gonna be installed on this car. I have the left side jacked up, but to uh, remove the drive shaft. Uh, and then this is the trans mount, brand new one. Center support boot, center support itself. Brand new bearing, really nice. All right guys, today's another day. We're starting to work on this W123 again. And today I need to replace the drive shaft flex this center support i got all my tools ready i got the parts so yeah let's get started this car is jacked up right now on this wheel and that side too so yeah jack stands and rubber pads all right so i'm under the car i'm about to remove this drive shaft and everything right and then i noticed this uh, fuel uh line and brake line retainer right here it's not uh connected or installed properly it's like rubbing slightly against this brake line it's not good so i'm gonna definitely fix that but it's just small things like that you know you pay attention to yeah so anyways i'm gonna start removing this drive shaft so yesterday i had a bunch of fun installing these shifter bushings especially this one because you have to do it from under the car unless if you want to remove the whole shifter assembly yeah so that took me hours actually not gonna lie because i was struggling and then as you can say i you know restored this uh shifter rod so it's not rusty anymore it's all protected nice and then also i'm gonna show you it's a little tight but this other one was also replaced well you can't see it well but you can see it from down here there's that other bushing that i changed there's that other shifter bushing that i also replaced it was a pain but yeah this one's a lot easier because i was able to remove this uh rod or this linkage right here so i did it outside of the trend you know the car here's the condition of the transmission mount that's pretty bad I'm gonna replace that and then this flex disc right there it's not that bad i don't know if it was changed or not but it's starting to have cracks right there actually you can barely see it it's not, it's just like right here where the this yoke is right there on the inside it's kind of hard to see but it's starting to wear and the rear one is actually a lot worse shape so got into quite a bit of a problem so this bolt is just spinning around it's not coming out or anything this other bolt is basically out as you can see but this one is just spinning around in that socket thing not socket but it's just like yeah so it's not catching the thread so yeah i've been struggling for this right now and uh so i'll have to figure something out but yep prepare for the worst i guess so here's what happened these retainers are rusting in there so the bolt so this retainer it's just like rusted out so now when you, when i turn it the whole thing turns as you can see and that's the problem Got this thing put something in there and keep it from turning yeah the only thing that sucks is i don't have this part right now so i'm gonna have to figure something out and uh get it online or whatever oh yeah this thing is really stuck in there that bolt the nut tried many different things tried putting stuff in there like uh shoving something in there put pressure on it i got some of the bolt loose but it's just so rusty in there it's just so tight and it just keeps slipping yeah so <laughs> definitely not fun i mean i could just you know kind of move this thing out of the way the cross member but i really want to take this thing out at least you know so at least this is taken care of i mean obviously i don't have parts but i mean it's going to hold it with three bolts for now if anything until i get the other stuff the other part okay so 
still dealing with that stupid bolt so i moved this cross member out of the way kind of like this and i loosened the bolts on both uh front and rear flex discs and i'm gonna go ahead and i have the transmission supported right here and uh yeah i got the i'm gonna loosen this um, center support and then take the whole thing out i had to loosen this big nut on the drive shaft because this one was tight and some of these they're not like super tight and some of them they are tight but even if you leave them i mean i usually like to tighten these the uh, the nuts after installation of the uh, drive shaft but sometimes i have encountered cars where you know this nut is actually not fully on all the way it's just kind of a little loose which lets the movement you know of the rear half of the drive shaft back and forth which is not a huge deal you know but uh, this one i'm gonna you know also install the drive shaft back i'll install the you know tighten that big nut as well so sometimes when these flanges are rusted in or seized you just have to grab the punch and just hit that rubber flex disc right there on and then you know start turning this a little more and then do the same to the other ear and that's it it's gonna be easy after all right so i'm ready to take this flex disc out and change that also i noticed some surface rust right here so i'm, I'm gonna use some wire wheel wire wheel that and put primer on it and then after that i'm probably gonna like coat it with grease and I'll end up doing the same on the other side, most likely. It's just some surface rust. I'm gonna take that, take care of that. All right, so I coated this uh, area with grease, like where the ears are and the middle portion. That way, new flex disc will never seize up and there will be easy to take it off if I ever need it. We got brand new flex disc right here and the drive shaft is going to be ready to go on shortly. Okay, so here's how bad this center support is. Got to change it. Let's get started. It's got new trans mount. This is the original one. It's, I don't know if it's been, if it's ever been replaced. It was a long time ago. All right, so I got all this rust cleaned up right here, pretty much. Now I'm gonna paint it. I still need to do the other side, but yeah, cleaned up this rust. I don't have much time today, but you know everything. I got all this surface rust cleaned up. Now I'm gonna paint it. And then I'm going to preserve it with grease after that. I will never ever have rust issues here in this area. Okay, so this drive shaft has two notches here and one right here. But I still made an extra mark before separating these two. So this one just kind of broke off. Bearing is bad too. Alright, we got new center support installed. Gonna clean the splines, grease them up, and reinstall the drive shaft together. Time to reinstall everything back now. I also started sanding this area right here. The surface, we still have to finish that part right there, but yeah, I have to do it. Okay, so this area is basically dry. I'm about to put like fluid film here probably and uh, yeah, I can start reinstalling everything. All right, so we've got a new flex disc. Everything is installed here on this side. And uh, yeah, about to install this trans mount too. Okay, this one also replaced, brand new. Yeah, so it's amazing, Phoebe. Yeah, the reason why I can't see anything is because it's on the other side. But this time I just decided to put it, flip it on the other side. Usually I put them all the markings on the inside. Here. Okay, we got center support all in, and I actually put a bunch of fluid film here above the dry shaft, this area as well. All right, guys, 
I got new sway bar link on this side. I fluid filmed a bunch of stuff here, especially on the bottom where the spring sits. It's really important. Lots of stuff, also coated right here. So the rust will never start. All right guys, we're about to do the diesel purge on this amazing machine. I topped off the coolant, new tank. Everything is pretty much ready to go here. And got fuel filters too, small and big one. And I got a, an O-ring and a crush washer for the fuel filter. So yeah, we're gonna start doing that. But before I do that, I actually wanna start it up because I haven't started it in like one and a half months ever since I started working on it. So actually no, in a month. So, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and start it up right now. Have the battery hooked up. All right, I'm gonna do the first start. After a while, after a long time, probably like a month. Cool. Let's go check it out. So far, so good. I mainly just want to run this engine right now and make sure that everything is good and the coolant and everything. It's got nice lights as well, the LED Amber Classic ones that I installed. All right, so temperature is at 80. Doing pretty amazing. And diesel purge. All right, we're done with the diesel purge. About to install this new pre-filter right there. And as you can see, I have a bag right there protecting that engine mount from diesel. Yep. And uh, yeah, after that, I'm gonna replace this big fil uh, fuel filter right here. All right, so I rinsed everything off here with water just in case, put all the fuel hoses back on. Now we're just gonna pump this primer pump the pre-filter with fuel like that looks like the primer pump is leaking a little that's okay and then we're gonna change this filter so this bolt has three or two o-rings and one crush washer so I'm gonna replace that and uh, yeah install that new filter this is the old filter is actually it's got a it's pretty dirty on the inside all right the o-rings replaced i'm not going to use the crush washer it's actually not for this car some cars have the crush washer that goes right here but not on this car so the car just has two o-rings so now before i tighten this all the way i'm gonna actually pump it up that way it fills up my Let's see, move it up a little bit more. 
and then I'm gonna loosen this some more. So I want to have this thing filled up with diesel. So this filter is still kind of loose, but you will feel a lot more resistance when uh, this filter fills up with diesel. And now you can tighten this 24 millimeter all the way. Now once everything's tight, I'm gonna rinse everything off with water. Mainly that engine mount in case something got on it. Yeah. We're about to start it up here shortly. Look at this. Crazy. Map torch helped me out. Hell yeah. Bolt is coming out. This is how I clamped it. Yep. She is still really hot. Still super hot. There we go. Out, finally. It's still super hot, this bolt. <laughs> Anyways, this is what the air looks like. Oh. So, everything is still intact. Um, it's just this right here is from the vice grip, me holding the vice grip. But I have new holders coming up. Uh, and, you know, we're going to install them. Everything is going to be great. So I'm not worried about anything here. Yeah, I'll just have to uh, take care of the surface rust right here, paint it the same way I did the rest of it here. And here's this main annoying guy that didn't want to come out. So if this method with the heat wasn't gonna work what i was gonna do is well my uh, this is actually a 17 millimeter wrench fits on that nut so i was gonna but the wrench itself this is a 17 millimeter wrench it doesn't really fit in there so i was gonna grind both ends right here to use that to hold it but then still maybe this would have you know just spun around around it off so that wasn't the best method another thing i was gonna just do is just cut the head off the bolt that way the rest of the stuff uh, stud was stuck would have been stuck in this uh, nut and then there's an opening on the other side so you could just take that out so that was another thing i was gonna do but well the heat method worked so that's exciting but it just took away a lot of my time you know i was gonna be done with this already a long time ago So there's a bunch of this rust right here in front of the rear subframe. So I'm taking care of it right now. Started cleaning the rust off. So got most of it wire wheeled. It's really hard to get to that corner. I'm gonna try to use uh, sandpaper, but yeah. All right, I got this area cleaned up from rust and painted. I'm about to put bearing grease. I already started putting bearing grease right here everywhere under the car as well. All right, I'm gonna install this as well. Coated it with grease. All right, so here's how everything looks. I'm just waiting on that one nut to get here so I can install that last bolt. But as you can see, I just, install that one there right now and everything is good and there's the transmission right there everything is torqued down good to go all right so i installed two brand new exhaust mounts unfortunately the two other ones i had did not fit so as of right now i'm just using the zip ties right here 
have to get taken care of in the near future, but everything is good. The exhaust system is all intact. Now I just have to put a grease here in this area and it should be all good to go. All right guys, so let's look at this valve. Here's the valve. That's your fuel vent valve. And a lot of times it gets clogged up and then causes the fuel tank to collapse. It happens on, to a lot of classic benzes. So uh, it's pretty easy, just these two clamps. We're gonna take this one, this clamp off. I'm gonna take the whole assembly out. And after you do that, it's a good idea to actually put a compressed air through here, make sure it's not clogged. Uh, so, okay. So let's see. I'm gonna pull this guy off. I'm gonna end up replacing this hose probably anyways. Like this. Ooh, there's like some rust right there in that line. You see this? That's strange. Here's the valve. Hmm. So I don't have compressed air now, but what I'm thinking is I'm probably gonna like put compressed air through the filler next somehow, or maybe I'll put, I'll put a vacuum pump on here to see. Hmm. All right, so believe it or not, this valve was actually clogged because when I tried to pump the air through it, it wasn't going and then all of a sudden like started going. So right now I can actually blow through it. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna maybe soak it in something or whatever. Maybe I can find a brand new one. This one's literally made in West Germany. So this is original to the car. It's pretty insane. Made in the West Germany. I like that. But yeah, I definitely wanna change this hose. It's cracked up. And I wanna see if that EVAP line is clogged up or not. I wanna verify that. This is what the assembly looks like if you wanna take a look at it closer. So the fuel vapors will go from here and then we'll just exit out right here, like that. The part number right here of this valve is 1234700093, what it looks like. Yeah. So, fuel tank is behind here so that's why you really want to make sure that everything here gets protected you don't want collapsed fuel tanks yeah. all right guys one of the last things i have to do is reinstall this and the fuel vent valve i uh, already cleaned it replaced this hose installed new clamps because the old ones were just, were just like rusty but now everything is good. The air goes through it and it was actually clogged up. And uh, so the best thing actually with this is you want to make sure that there's no, it's not clogged up. So you can put the compressed air through here. But what I would do is I would actually put it through the filler neck. I'll put a rag around the filler neck and the compressed air. Now I'd make sure that this is free right here. So yeah, unfortunately I don't have the compressed air right now with me but i'm gonna see what i can do to you know double check to make sure she's okay here so i attached the vacuum pump to this line and when i pump it it's uh it's not really doing anything that probably means that the line is okay it's not clogged up but still the best thing is to do it with the compressed air just yeah just to make sure because there's actually some particles inside like rusty and rusty so but i was using these uh pick tools to actually like get that thing out of there you know so hopefully that line is okay it's not like all rusted on the inside so yeah so here's another tip i'm actually blowing into this line and basically with the filler cap open uh, you should not feel the back pressure when you close the filler cap if everything else is sealed up once you start blowing into this tube 
then eventually will stop it will like basically backfire it will start like but the back pressure is gonna come back at you so but right now like everything is good actually this line is not clogged up so yeah i'm literally blowing into it and it's it's going good yeah so it's not blocked or anything so that's really really good sign and now actually i'll show you if i I close this filler knife like that the cap i'm gonna try to do this again it's gonna backfire see that All right, so I'm changing this door seal on this door. And these clips are a little bit of a pain, but you just need to have long needle nose pliers. And you just squeeze these and pull. You just be really careful, take your time. Still have like three more clips to go. So I'm trying to be really careful to save these clips. So this one got a little bit damaged but it's still okay to reuse looks like that this one is in a better shape two more left okay so silicone paste right here is on the seal and i'm gonna put some later on the outside as well but also fluid film this channel to protect from rust so all the door seals are replaced except this door seal. It was still in good condition. The only thing is it just has this slight cut right here, but that's not a huge deal. But what I did on all four door seals is I coated them with silicone paste. Yeah, looks pretty good. It's gonna get all protected. All right, I finally got a good used uh, nut assembly with a brand new bolt, basically. I'm gonna reuse the washer and that other washer. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna install it, put some uh, silicone paste or whatever grease you wanna use, put it in there. And I'm actually gonna uh, put fluid foam on this guy too. All right, everything is back in, all the bolts, great. Now I'm gonna put some Now I'm just testing the uh, drains. They're actually in good condition, not clogged, oops. that it's good so that side is good too and this was lubricated before too i'm just gonna add more lube and she's good i'm gonna close it up amazing such a smooth car yeah don't pay attention to uh the tachometer yeah so as you can see there's that same thing that socket uh plug is just uh it's not uh making a good contact but we'll take care of that other than that guys the car feels amazing feels all revived the alignment is actually pretty good even though i replaced all those control arms and everything yeah so it's uh it's doing pretty good super happy about it yeah, amazing machine. Yeah, the transmission just needs vacuum modulator and uh, adjustment after all. And she's gonna be great. Wow, what an amazing machine. So smooth and everything. transmission shifting wonky right now but yeah it's gonna be one of the next projects to do on this car it's okay
All right, guys, so we are done fixing and sorting this car out. It just needs a couple more things like transmission modulator and adjustment. Other than that, it's an amazing car. Uh, lots of work has been done to it to, you know, it, it's, it was in a great shape initially, but it just needed some stuff here and there, which we took care of. And that's the most important thing. And uh, yeah, I um, was super happy to, you know, be able to bring this car back on the road and have a chance to do that. Uh, yeah, super excited, uh, you know, to see these amazing cars on the road. And, you know, thanks to all of you uh, who take care of and, and love these amazing old school machines. You guys rock. You guys are amazing. Yeah, so 